everybody welcome to my youtube channel i am samantha and i'm a christian that wants to talk about maladaptive of daydreaming because nobody is talking about it so if nobody's talking about it then how are people going to get saved and delivered like how I, it's, it's crazy that nobody's talking about it i definitely want to get a disclaimer out here because it's very important to know that daydreaming is not inherently bad it's when you obsess over it, when it becomes an addiction, and when you think about things that are not true and right in the eyes of God, it is a problem. So now that I gave you that, then what is maladaptive daydreaming? Maladaptive daydreaming is a spiritual attack on the mind when you think about false thoughts, false plots, false characters that are typically violent and sexual. Now, this may occur if you had a lonely childhood or if you've been through a traumatic situation or if you were abused or neglected. Maladaptive daydreaming could play a part in your adult life or even your teenage or earlier younger years as a child. Now, I definitely want to give you two Bible verses to think about because God's word is so true and it shines a light on what we should be thinking about as, you know, a believer and what our minds should be set on. So the two scriptures I'm going to pull up are Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. So I'm going to give y'all time to pull it up because I want to spend it together because <laughs> I got to pull it up too. So Philippians 4 8 says, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And when you listen and um, read these scriptures, it's like, how are you able to do these things if you're thinking lustful thoughts or if you're thinking violent thoughts on an excessive scale? And when I mean obsessive, I mean you're daydreaming like two to three, four, five, or even six hours a day. Or you may want to go to sleep because you want to daydream or be in these false plots or narratives. And I can say I used to do that too. I definitely want to give you characteristics of what the spirit of maladaptive daydreaming may look like on a day-to-day -day basis and the effects of it. One effect of having maladaptive daydreaming or being a maladaptive daydreamer is that you have a foggy memory. You tend to not remember um, things or habits on your day-to-day -day, um, basis or you begin to forget, you know, um, responsibilities that you're supposed to do. Another thing that I also realized is that it's a time stealer. You waste so much time and being that you waste so much time, you find that it takes longer to do your purpose or it's long, it takes you longer to be obedient to Christ. Or even then, if you're in the same cycle, right? <laughs> and you're in the same place that you were last year. I think that's a very good evidence of if you're a melodic daydreamer or you are highly distracted of what God has called you to do. Another thing is you have confusion. You're, you, you're confused. Um, also, I mentioned this earlier that it's, it's an addiction as well, um, that it's very hard to break, especially if is something that was developed when you were a child or adolescent. Another side effect of being a maladaptive daydreamer is that you have suicidal, depressive, depressive, and lustful thoughts. And what I mean by that is that these thoughts are triggered because you're escaping reality. And so you start to hate your reality. You start to hate the life that you have. And so you have suicidal thoughts because of that. You want to escape from it. Why is it wrong? Because yes, I gave you the side effects. I told you what it is. So it's wrong because it's idolatry and a misplaced focus. God has called us to set our mind on things that are true and worthy, right? So God is worthy. God is true. Jesus is true. And if we set our mind on things like a character or a plot or a story in our head that we're fantasizing for, hours and hours and hours a day it's like it's in a distraction from god and that's idolatry right idolatry is when when you place your want and need in something else when god can already provide it that's that's how i describe it when we 
turn to know that after daydreaming when um, we feel like insecure or when we feel the need to escape it's like no I want to be lost in God I want to be lost in Jesus Christ okay and it can never be difficult because of the habits and the addiction and I also realized that with now that after daydreaming is that you do it alone and in private because you're ashamed to do it in public and that's another thing too which is also a problem because God, he wants us to be bold, right? Bold in him, bold about the gospel, bold um, in our mindsets on things that are true and worthy and admirable, right? So my love of daydreaming is not admirable, it's not worthy, it's not true. So a side effect of that is that since we know that thing subconsciously, we try to hide it because we know it's not right. We hide it from our friends or we hide it from our family members and even then, um, a sense of shame comes into play and that's not what God wants us to feel, you know? That plays in with the condemnation and conviction thing. Because it's one thing about being convicted and we're convicted through love, but when you're condemned, you, you, you get a sense of feeling of shame as well. But the, I say all these things to say, because I'm gonna keep this video you know, short and to the point is that God is able to do immeasurably more than we think and we can imagine, right? Jesus has shown up as our savior and our deliverer, deliverer. And if he has shown us that he's a deliverer and our savior, he will deliver us from another death of daydreaming. I have 100% faith in that he will, and he will do it for you. So I definitely want to encourage you, you all to pray fast, read God's word, because I find it that when I do those things, I don't have the urge to daydream on and on and on about things that are not true and that are lustful and violent i i think about christ and even then when um the thought or the urge do pop up in my head i instantly like okay let me read the bible because i view god's word as holy and i wouldn't dare to disrespect god's presence when i'm opening up the bible and i'm, I'm reading his word and i do believe that god will do everything that he said he would do if he said he a deliverer he will deliver you from this if he said he's our savior and he has shown us that he is our savior he will definitely save you as well so that is it for my video of maladaptive of daydreaming i know that this will be the first video of a long awaited series of maladaptive of daydreaming as a christian how to be delivered from it what it is what can god do in my life for it and Definitely let me know your thoughts and below in the comments. And I definitely have a blog post on this topic as an introductory blog as well for you to read if you know there's some information you want to read more about and just get you know tuned in about what Melodic of Daydreaming is. So thank you for watching and I definitely see y'all in the next one. Bye y'all.